Let's take a look at the second type of error. This second type of error is called Lagrange error bound, but for convenience sake, I'm going to coin it E2 so that we can refer to it more easily. Like with E1, we're approximating the error if we use a polynomial of order n at x0 to approximate f of x0, we analyze the error. So this notation here again is the error equals the remainder at x0. Now this is what makes this one very special. We say, according to Lagrange error bound, that the error is actually equal to, very important symbol there, equal to, the nth plus one derivative of the function at some number c. Now this is going to be a very important analysis of that number c, so just bear with me. x naught minus a to the nth plus one power all over n plus one factorial. And this is going to be true for some value of c. We don't know what the value of c is, but we know that it is true for some value of c. The criteria here, though, is that c has to be between the center and the value of x0. And this notation here describes that, that some number c is between a and the value of x0. And let's analyze this a bit further. So. Since we do not know this value of c, it's not that helpful, unless, of course, we can figure out what the maximum value of this value is. So what I'm going to say is that the error is going to be less than or equal to the fn plus 1 prime of c maximum. That's important. That maximum value, if we can determine that, then we can say that the error is less than this quantity here. And I'll just finish writing it. There we go. And now I'm going to spend the next couple examples seeing if we can make sense of this. What do I mean by C? What is this? Looks a little bit like a mess right now. That's my goal. I want this to feel crystal clear to you after we're done the next couple examples. Example number six. Now I hope you recognize this example because it is the same example that we did in part one or E1. The difference here is we are going to analyze the error using this now E2. Let's start off by uh, just remembering what the cosine of x is equal to. So we have 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, so on and so forth. Okay, so now here in part A, we're going to construct our polynomial f of x is approximately, the zero order is 1, the first order is 0, contributes nothing, the second order is x squared over 2 factorial, the third order is another 0, the fourth order is x to the fourth over 4 factorial, and the fifth order is another 0, contributes nothing. So this polynomial here is a fourth order polynomial, but it is also a fifth order polynomial. Now we say that f of 0 0.5, which is the cosine of 0 0.5, is approximately a fifth order polynomial at 0 0.5, which is 1 minus 0 0.5 squared over 2 factorial plus 0 0.5 to the power of 4 over 4 factorial. No need to simplify. What we want to do now here in part B is talk about the error in this approximation. So I'll just abbreviate by saying this error is equal to f of the 0 0.5 minus the polynomial at the 0 0.5. That would be the difference between the actual function's value and the polynomial's value. The error, of course. And with notation, that is simply r5 of 0 0.5.
So now, according to E2, the error is going to equal, it's going to equal the sixth derivative at some number C, 0 0.5 minus 0 to the power of 6 all over 6 factorial. And here, our value of C has to be between the 0 and the 0 0.5. We don't know what this value of C is. Again, that is an important ingredient to this. We don't know what this value of C is. The only thing according to this theorem is that C has to be between 0 and 0 0.5. So I cannot come up with a value here and maintain this equality because I don't know what it equals. What I can say, however, is that whatever this expression here is will be less than or equal to the sixth derivative of C max, whatever that max value is, 0 0.5 to the 6 over 6 factorial. So let's analyze the sixth derivative of f at C. Well, we know that f of x is the cosine of x. The first derivative would be negative sine of x. The second, the third, the fourth, and then the sixth derivative would come out to be negative cosine of x. And so the sixth derivative at C is going to be negative cosine of C. I don't know what C is. But if C is between 0 and 0 0.5, then I know that this expression here, or if I put absolute values around it, I know that the cosine of C, if C is between 0 and 0 0.5, at its biggest can be 1. So this is less than or equal to 1. And now I have that ceiling that I desired here. This ceiling becomes 1. So this is going to be 1, 0 0.5 to the 6th over 6 factorial, which equals 0.5 to the 6 is 1 half to the 6 or 1 over 2 to the 6 times 6 factorial, which is exactly what we were asked to show, that the error is less than or equal to this value. Check. Let's take a look at the next example, number 7. f of x is the cosine of 2x. This one's a little bit harder because the center that they're giving us is pi over 3, that is not the natural center. So that's going to make us do a little bit more work when we construct a, a second order polynomial centered about pi over 3. So we might as well review this here. f of x is equal to the cosine of 2x. So f at pi over 3 comes out to be the cosine of 2 pi over 3 and that comes out to be negative 1 half. f prime of x is equal to negative 2 sine of 2x. f prime at pi over 3 will be negative 2 times the sine of 2 pi over 3, and that comes out to be negative radical 3. And the second derivative, and the second derivative at pi over 3, negative 4 cosine 2 pi over 3, comes out to be just 2. Now, I don't need this yet, but I'm going to go ahead and find the third derivative, which is going to be 8 sine of 2x. And now, our, our second order polynomial, f of x, is approximately p2 of x, which is negative 1 half minus radical 3 x minus pi over 3 plus 2, it's plus 2 x minus pi over 3 squared over 2 factorial.
and we're asked to approximate f of 5 pi over 24, and that will be approximately p2 5 pi over 24, and that will equal the following polynomial with simply plugging in 5 pi over 24 for x. And there we have it, no need to simplify. Let's take a look at the error in using this approximation. So the error is going to equal f of 5 pi over 24 minus p2 5 pi over 24, which we will denote r2 5 pi over 24. Now, according to Lagrange error bound, this is going to equal the third derivative at some number c. 5 pi over 24 minus pi over 3 to the power of 3 all over 3 factorial. That's the equal part. Provided, of course, that c is between the center, which is pi over 3, this time the center is larger than the value of x naught. But in any case, c has to be between x naught and the center. And this inequality will be less than or equal to the third derivative of c max. going to circle this. This is the ceiling that we wish to seek. And below here, I will say that the third derivative of c, which we computed above, which will be 8 sine of 2c. There's our expression. And we have to figure out what the maximum value of that expression here, what's the maximum value of this expression when c is between 5 pi over 24 and pi over 3. And like before, we see this trigonometric expression here. And on 5 pi to 24 to pi over 3, the largest that this can be is 1. So that tells us that this is less than or equal to 8 times 1. That becomes our ceiling to the expression above. So this equals 8 times 5 pi over 24 minus pi over 3 cubed over 3 factorial. And if you simplify this mess, you get 8 times pi over 8 to the power of 3 over 6. And then that, if we keep going, is equal to pi cubed over 6 times 8 squared, which is equal to pi cubed over 384, which is less than pi cubed over 380. That was our goal, to show that the error is less than this value here. And using E2, Lagrange error bound. Example number 8, our final example of E2. f of x is the square root of 1 plus x in part a. We want a first order polynomial centered at 0, and we're going to estimate f of 0 0.2. So let's raw construct here. f of x, square root of 1 plus x. f prime of x, 1 half. 1 plus x to the negative 1 half power. Okay, so f at 0 is equal to 1. f prime of 0 is equal to 1 half. I'm going to go ahead now and do the second derivative. Even though I don't need that for the raw construction, I will need that for my error analysis. And that's going to be negative 1 fourth, 1 plus x to the negative 3 halves. Part A, f of x is approximately 1 plus 1 half 
x. f of 0 0.2 is really asking for the square root of 1.2, which is approximately p1 of x, a linear approximation, 1 plus 1 half times 0 0.2, and that comes out to be 1.1. And now the error is going to equal the second derivative of some number c, 0 0.2 to the power of 2 over 2 factorial. Now, where is c? c has to be between the center of 0 and the x0 value of 0 0.2. We are going to find the ceiling to this. So I come below and say that the second derivative of c is equal to 1 fourth, 1 plus c to the negative 3 halves power. And we can see that this value is going to be largest when c is equal to 0. So the ceiling on this is 1 fourth. And so this is less than or equal. I'll just be consistent with my notation max 0 0.2 squared over 2 factorial and that's going to be less than or equal to 1 fourth 0 0.2 squared over 2 factorial. If I simplify this I get 1 over 200 which is definitely less than or equal to because it is equal to that. And so we proved that the error is less than or equal to 0 0.005 using E2. You might notice also that we could not have used E1, the alternating series bound, because the series here is not strictly alternating. That was true of number 7 as well.